What's up, folks? How's it going? This is Watch. Hope you guys are all doing well. And today we're going to be talking about my favorite controllers for the Xbox Series S, X, as well as the PC. And many of these controls will also work on other platforms such as iOS and Android. Now, specifically, we're going to be taking a look at the Microsoft Elite Series 2 controller, the Thrustmaster eSwap X Pro, the Scuf Prestige, as well as the Razer Wolverine version 2. And we're going to run through each controller, talk about the advantages and disadvantages that each one presents. But before we get into that, we have to thank our sponsor Skillshare that made this video possible. Now, Skillshare is probably one of the biggest online learning communities designed specifically for creators or really anybody that wants to acquire a new useful skill or expand upon their existing knowledge. With a broad spectrum of classes ranging from productivity, business, marketing, as well as more creative endeavors such as fine art, photography, film and video, music, and much more. I personally used Daniel Scott's classes on Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop many times and found it extremely helpful and would highly recommend his essential training course series on Adobe Photoshop Illustrator and InDesign for any beginners out there. Furthermore, I've been really fascinated with 3D illustrations and DKNG Studios has a great class on creating isometric designs from scratch using Adobe Illustrator. So if you want to make that kind of SimCity-esque dynamic looking three-dimensional artwork on a 2D plane, it's definitely a neat class to check out. Now, if you're interested in trying out Skillshare, the first of the 1,000 subscribers that click in the description down below get a free trial of the premium membership where they have access to the entire Skillshare class library as well as community perks and live classes. Big thanks to Skillshare for making this content possible. Now coming back to the main topic at hand, let's talk about the Scuf Prestige controller. Now Scuf has really been known for, for allowing you to fully customize and configure your controller for the Xbox or PlayStation pretty much from the ground up, from the bottom shell, buttons, the uh, thumbsticks, whether you want convex, concave, different heights of the thumbsticks, and as well as the color scheme of uh, pretty much every aspect of the controller can be custom configured to match a specific theme or style that you're going for. On top of that, you can also swap out the face plates and thumbstick springs for different color schemes or graphical inlays so you could potentially have a whole bunch of different looks and configuration with only using one controller by buying all these different face plates and thumbstick rings. Now the overall shape and design of the Scuf Prestige pretty much mirrors the official Microsoft controller which is definitely a good thing since most people consider it to be kind of an almost perfect design for a gamepad these days. There is uh, some changes in terms of the weight dynamics. You you can uh, take out the uh, two dual rumble packs and uh, get the controller down to about 216 grams versus 267 grams with those rumble packs still installed. Furthermore, the back of the controller is lined with a non-slip textured rubberized surface, which feels very secure in the hand and fairly comfortable to use for long periods of time, even when your palms and fingers get a little sweaty after a long, intense uh, gaming session. Now, the overall dynamics and feel of the ABXY thumbsticks and D-pad on the Prestige is pretty much identical to the standard Microsoft controller. However, the bumpers and triggers do feel a little bit different. The bumpers specifically are a little bit more tactile, have a more clickier sensation, and uh, definitely feel a little bit more reinforced than the standard Microsoft controller. Additionally, you have built-in trigger stops located on the back end of the controller. So with the switch, you can essentially switch from full range of motion to a shortened range of motions on the triggers themselves for a more rapid fire approach. Furthermore, you also get this key that comes with the controller that allows you to manually control the distance of your trigger stop. So if you want a more shorter throw distance or longer throw distance, you could do so by turning the key clockwise or counterclockwise to tighten or loosen the triggers respectively. And certainly the most unique factor of the Scuf Prestige is the four rear mounted paddles that have the ability to remap up to 14 different commands of the controller on any one of these paddles. And you can program those functions using the electromagnetic key that comes with the controller so you simply insert this key at the back of the controller hold the paddle that you want to assign a specific command to press the button that you want to remap whether that's a b x y l s r s left right bumpers the d-pad view and menu button you however cannot reprogram the uh, analog thumbsticks in any directions or the triggers now in terms of the ergonomics of the paddles themselves i would definitely say that the outer paddles are a lot more accessible than the inner ones this is one thing that the uh, 
Elite Series 2 Microsoft controller implements a little bit better where the paddles are actually mounted laterally and uh, fall closer in lines with your fingers as they would naturally be gripping the controller versus on uh, the Scuf Prestige over here it's pretty easy to access those outer panels but when you're holding the controller tightly to engage those inner two paddles you might have to do a little bit of hand yoga to actually initiate a, a remap command. Now some of the other highlights on the Prestige is the fact that you do also have Bluetooth as well as standard 2.4 gigahertz wireless connectivity options so you can easily connect this to any other Bluetooth uh, receiving device including a PC, Mac, Android or iOS device which is pretty cool. On top of that you have a built-in lithium-ion battery that has a battery life of up to 30 hours as well as a 10 foot braided USB cable for charging as well as using this controller in a wired fashion. Now next let's talk about probably one of the most unique controllers that you can get on the Xbox platform and that is the Thrustmaster eSwap X Pro controller. Now what this offers is probably one of the most modular designs you can get on a gamepad right now where you have the ability to uh, switch the thumbsticks d-pad to an asymmetrical thumbsticks pattern or a symmetrical pattern that you typically find on a PlayStation style controller. On top of that you can actually swap out each of these modules for specific game specific controls or button configurations. So you can basically uh, create your own uh, gamepad specifically designed for fighting games, role playing or strategy games or first person shooters. The really neat thing about these e-swap modules is they're actually magnetically attached, fully hot swappable so it's actually really easy to swap out all these modules on the fly without any screwdrivers or special tools. Now this is actually the second iteration of the e-swap X Pro controller and uh, Thrustmaster has improved the overall build quality tremendously. The A, B, X, Y buttons feel a lot more clicky and uh, immediate, certainly a little bit more tactile than the first generation. Uh, the thumbsticks themselves center a lot quicker. And and the triggers and the overall fit and finish has improved slightly as well to match higher end esports grade equipment. I also like the fact that you have dedicated volume and mute buttons for your headset controls on the controller itself, which is nice to see and something you don't find in a pretty much most Microsoft controller these days. And at the back, you're also going to notice that we have trigger stops built into the triggers so you can shorten the throw distance for a rapid fire action. And you can also see that we have four rear mounted buttons for a rear mapping purposes unfortunately they're not paddles so they're definitely not as accessible as what we find on the microsoft elite or scuff controller now in terms of the ergonomic design it's fairly neutral it does utilize a unique shape that doesn't copy the microsoft controller which is nice to see and it's neutral enough that most people probably wouldn't mind, but I would assume at this point, most people would still probably prefer the uh, standard shape of the Microsoft controller over uh, this shape. And uh, I certainly do so as well. The uh, texture of uh, the controller is a semi kind of grippy. Uh, the back is uh, decently uh, more grippy uh, than the front, but the overall rubberized texture finish is definitely not as secure as uh, some of the other premium controllers in this kind of price range. And uh, after a prolonged sweaty gaming session it can get a little slippery at times as well now it's important to note that at 160 to 180 dollars you are certainly paying a premium for the modularity and overall design factor because this is not a wireless controller it's a wired only option and you're pretty much around the same price range as a scuff prestige or a microsoft elite series 2 which might be a tough sell for some people but given the unique modularity aspect of the controller and uh, the fact that you can uh, custom cater a controller to your specific genre or playing style this is certainly a unique proposition for some gamers out there now moving forward let's talk about the wolverine version 2 from razer now this is kind of the opposite of uh, most of the controllers that we've discussed so far there's not a lot of customization options it's pretty much only one color scheme uh, there's no modular components that you can swap in and out there's no paddles at the back uh, basically it's just a basic wired controller but it does a damn fine job at doing that firstly the first thing you notice is the button quality is sensational razer has been making gaming 
mice and keyboards for a while and they're using some of that mechanical tactile switch technology and directly embedding it into the gamepad. So the first thing you notice when you press the D-pad or A, B, X, Y buttons is the immediate short throw distance of the buttons themselves and this nice kind of clicky responsive feel that you get right away. The buttons have a 3 million click cycle rating and the actuation distance is only 0.65 millimeters which is about 35% less than your average rubber dome or membrane style switch found on most traditional Xbox controllers. Apart from the satisfying clicky feel, I also love the shape and size of the A, B, X, Y, as well as uh, the D-pad buttons, very easy to access. Uh, the analog thumbsticks, on the other hand, don't feel as smooth as some of the other premium and controllers, certainly not as smooth to engage in the X, Y position uh, as the, uh, the Elite Series 2 controller from Microsoft, but definitely not bad uh, for the price range of under $100, and they move to the center position relatively quickly as well. Now, the bumpers, again have this nice kind of clicky mechanical feel and uh, you also have a M2 and M1 a buttons basically a middle position bumper that you can uh, remap specific commands to and uh, the triggers are also nicely dampened as well as have trigger stop capabilities like most of the controllers on our list. Now, what I love most about the Wolverine version 2 is the overall design. It's unique. It doesn't copy the original Microsoft Xbox controller design, which is cool to see. And it utilizes something Razer calls the ergonomic L shape hand grip design, which shifts the balance point to more of a center line position. So uh, the controller sits well in the hand and you have easier access to the bumpers, triggers, as well as uh, thumbsticks. You also notice that the palm and side grips have a nice kind of gradual rounding effect fact which aids in the level of comfort and security that you feel and the textured rubberized finish that's surrounding the grips also feels extremely secure in the hand and fairly sweat resistant as well. Overall I love the simplicity aspect of the Wolverine version 2 and if you're looking for a no nonsense no bells and whistles wired gamepad solution for your Xbox Series S, X or the PC this is probably one of the best wired gamepads on the market right now. Now last but not least, let's talk about the Xbox Elite Series 2 controller. I've been using this thing for over a year now and I have to say that it's pretty much the Mercedes of a game pads out there. It's probably one of the best controller in terms of fit and finish, material design. It feels so premium in the hand as soon as you actually uh, start using one. It's kind of like everything has a soft touch like feel, but the textured rubberized finish adds a level of security and comfort that you typically don't find in other controllers in this price range. And it's also fairly moisture and sweat resistant as well. And the switch quality of the ABXY triggers, D-pads, analog thumbsticks, bumpers, etc., are second to none and the cool thing is straight out of the box you get some cool customization options where you have the ability to change the height of your thumbsticks you can change whether you want a convex or concave surface you can even adjust the level of tension on the thumbsticks from loose to firm with three different settings you can swap out the traditional plus style d-pad with a circular one that's included in the box and the triggers themselves have three different adjustable distance settings which is also unique and not found in other controllers. Beyond that, as we mentioned before, the button remapping capabilities on the rear mounted paddles is probably the best in terms of the ergonomic design, where each of the paddles are very accessible to all four fingers at pretty much all times when you're using the controller. Furthermore, in terms of wireless connectivity, it utilizes a low latency 2.4 gigahertz frequency to connect directly to an Xbox, or you can use Bluetooth to connect to a PC, Mac, iOS, or Android compatible device. On top of using it as a wired only controller using the integrated USB USB-C connection and in terms of the battery life the built-in lithium-ion battery is rated up to 40 hours of gameplay. Now the only real downside of the Elite Series 2 controller has to be the price point at around $180 it actually retails for more than what you would typically find a used Xbox One goes for these days so it's definitely not a cheap or affordable option for most people out there but if you're looking for the ultimate gamepad for your PC or Xbox or really anything that you want to utilize a game gamepad for the Elite Series 2 is probably the best controller on the market right now. But really on that guys, that's really, I generally think that the standard Xbox Microsoft controller is fantastic. It's probably a great for 99% of people out there, but if you're looking for a premium controller, I would definitely have to know what you guys think is the best option out there. 
And if you haven't done so, make sure you have liked the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Make sure you have post notifications turned on and check out our sponsor Skillshare that made this video possible. Thanks again. We'll see you real soon in the next one. Take care.